Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with the latest in the every version possible edition of Bruckner Symphonies on Capriccio, featuring Marcus Poschner, conductor, this time with the ORF Vienna Radio Symphony Orchestra. And here it is. And it features Bruckner's Symphony No. 5, his weirdest, most Bruckner-ish symphony. Really an incredible piece of music. Eugen Jochum said it best when he said, The problem with Bruckner's Fifth is that it lasts 75 minutes and nothing happens until the end. And that is true. That is really basically true. I mean, this performance, I don't think it's quite 75 minutes. It's 70 minutes and 57 seconds, which is all to the good. But it really is a symphony where the end is the end. And the key is to keep it interesting until we get to the end, when that huge chorale comes blasting in. You know, it's Bruckner's first finale symphony. You know, people talk about Bruckner symphonies having a finale problem. Well, that's not really a fair a fair assessment because some symphonies are weighted towards their first movements with the finales being lighter and less important but appropriate. And others are resolved in the finale, the grand finale. Well, this is the grandest of grand finale symphonies. So everything is leading up to that finale with the enormous double fugue and all the, you know, the big chorale at the end. And then it's, it's hard to do. And this performance does it does it marvelously and does it in a way which is very, very interesting and different from all the other ways that it can be done, which is what makes it a fabulous performance, a unique performance. The first movement, first of all, um, has is, is it's got to be the most cogent performance of the first movement that I've heard in a very, very long time. You know, the key to so much of this music is timing, timing the pauses, getting the tempos right so that the whole thing holds together in the sense that, you know, he, you know, Bruckner writes in modules, thematic modules, and he'd like does one, then it stops, then he does another, then it stops. Then he has what is nominally a development section where some bits of the modules kind of overlap and interfere with each other, then it stops, then it starts. You know, in order to make that make sense, especially in this symphony where nothing happens until the end, you've got to have your timing right. And boy, does he have his timing right. Those huge, huge upward arpeggios and chorales with pauses between them at the beginning. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. He makes us feel that that sequence of events separated by silence is one overarching idea. It's really fascinating. Listen to it when, if you get a chance, if you can hear this, and you'll see exactly what I mean. You'll hear exactly what I mean. There, you, the, the, the whole thing holds together. It's not a sequence of separate events that have nothing to do with each other. And it's all a function of timing. It really is. The second subject of the first movement, you know, with the pizzicatos, blank, 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 and that tune that just starts out positively and then sort of, sort of wilts, do, 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 boom, ba, da, 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 bum, ba, da. This has, he keeps the tempo going. He preserves the allegro quality of that, of that idea. And it's marvelous, absolutely marvelous. It's phrased beautifully. The, the violins really speak. You get the idea that the music is telling us something. Uh, he, he spends a great deal of time, actually, and making sure that string articulation is 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 correct is is what Bruckner wants, you know, when he's doing all those that seesawing, that chunk, 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 that nice staccato, but it's still full toned, and he, he, it's just just a lot of wonderful details that you'll hear just in the first movement. Now the second movement, of course, is the adagio, and it's another one that can really die. Oh my God, can it die? Here it takes fifteen minutes and thirty eight seconds, which is just about ideal. The opening is rather swift, a dum, bum, 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 bum. It's still adagio because it's in cut time. I think it's in cut time. So it's dum, bum, bum. Every three of those is a beat. So it's shun, two, three, two, two, three. That's slow. So it really is an adagio, but it has, again, that fluidity, that feeling of movement. The scherzo is thrilling. 
absolutely thrilling. It has wonderful accelerandos. The, the outer sections never hang fire. He doesn't he doesn't die in those sort of Landler like episodes when it's going yeah da dum bum bum ba, da 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 da. He just keeps it moving. He knows how to keep it moving. Then we get to the finale. Ah, the finale. Yes, with the killer fugue and all that. Well, it all goes really well. It really does. And the most interesting thing about it is that at the end, what most people do is they go roaring up to the final corral, then they slam on the brakes to make it as grandiose as possible. And it works. I mean, it's one way to do it. I'm not saying that that's wrong, but he does just the opposite. This is really cool. It's a new concept for how to handle the ending, and I really like it. He begins the coda very slowly when it's going, with the recurrence of the material from the first movement. He starts to take that very slowly, but then as he approaches the chorale, he speeds up. He speeds up, and so the chorale has maximal excitement. And I think it works with this orchestra, because we're not dealing with a brass section like from the Chicago Symphony here. We just aren't. You, they play very, very well. They really do, but, but they need to be able to have enough life left. So often performances of this symphony, symphony die in that final chorale, because the brass section just doesn't have the lung power you know, to carry it off. Well, here they do have the lung power because the tempo makes sense. And once again, it's a big, giant, overarching phrase. It's not a sequence of separate events separated by strings going, you know, it really works. And the ending has the most wonderful rhythmic incisiveness where the trombones are going, junk, 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 you know, it's, Oh, it's just great. It's absolutely great. This is a fabulous, wonderful, marvelous Bruckner Fifth. And it's all the more exciting because some of the previous re re you know, releases in this series have not been that great. They really haven't. I mean, it's, it's what do you expect? You know, you hire somebody, you say, oh, you're going to do everything Bruckner wrote. And they'll have better feeling for some things than for other things. But here, it seems like Poshner really understands what the uh, what what the tricks are to pull this piece off, what needs to be done, and he's given it some serious thought, and he's come up with his own personal solutions, and they work fabulously well. So if you like Bruckner, and if you like Bruckner's Fifth Symphony, you will want to hear this. It's a definite, distinctive, splendid realization of this, Bruckner's most characterful, and some would argue his most perfect, uh, symphony. Get no argument from me there. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.